the wages of sin is death, but Jesus paid that price in that. Amen. So when we were on the corner today, and that we were giving out uh, tracts and soul winning, right next to a booth that was giving out the Elder Ron Hubbard tracts. Oh, no. That's what we said. Yeah, Scientology oh, no. versus, you know, theology. And uh, so I walk up to the guy and I said, let me see your, you know, Chris guy, how you doing? He says, yeah, we have a track. And it said, what did it say something about happiness? It said, um, the way happiness to happiness. And happiness. The way to happiness. And I was like, boy, if they only knew. So he said, we can, he, he, he said, look, we could do this together. So you, you know, you can help, because you guys, you guys promote happiness, right? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> we don't promote anything. We, 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 uh, we witness and we uh, give the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit promotes the, the, the gospel. We are just ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And he said, well, he said, well, why don't we go ahead and partner up? And, uh, seen right over his head, you know, and, uh, he said, well, we all, we both believe the same thing. We believe that, you know, if you do good and and ultimately, you can kind of sustain a, a sense of happiness just by, you know, if you, you know, pay your bills, get a job, and do right, be morally correct, that that in of itself will uh, kind of uh, give you a security. And I said, my friend, we are in totally two different directions. You're talking about something temporal, I'm talking about something internal. Amen. You're talking about something that is in that that you're gonna do, and I'm talking about something that God has already done. Amen. And we battled out, they were giving out tracks, and John, he was, tell them what you were doing, John. Well, I mean, he would, they were, he, he would, he would interrupt us during the middle of like praying for people. He would walk out trying to hand people things, like, here you go. So basically, I just kind of, I, I had tracks in my hand, thanks to some of the partners that we had with us. So I just kind of like nicely traded them tracks. I took their tracks and gave them our tracks, so. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the cars are pulling up and he's running out and the other guys are running out giving Elron Hubbard and he would run back and say, give me that, let me give you this one. <laughs> and he comes back to me and goes, here, here's a bunch of tracks from that other happiness place. So I give it back to the guy and say, yeah, I don't know, you might have left these. <laughs> you know. Amen. So we're gonna, right now, I want you guys uh, to encourage the Holy Spirit to minister to our, to our hearts tonight. I, I'm going to be speaking out of the book of Mark, but before I do, I definitely want to call the Holy Spirit to be the teacher, the guide. He is the only preacher here, and I want to ask that he would minister to our spirit. So, Father, we just praise you, God. We recognize that the Holy Spirit is in this place. Father, it, it, it never left. Lord, but we pray, God, for a downpouring of your spirit so that we can have an understanding of this this word, God, this truth, Father God, this this food, God. Let us let us partake in this truth, God, that our hearts would be changed. I, I don't want to leave here the same, Lord. I want a revelation from you. I didn't come here to, to socialize, God. I came to hear from you. Yeah. So, Father, open my ears that I might hear. Open my eyes that I might see. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 I want you guys to take out your Bibles. Everyone bring scripture to church, amen. And turn to the book of Mark, chapter 5. Chapter 5, it's verses uh, 21. This is an account of one of Jesus' many miracles that he did. Um, uh, when Jesus was uh, crossing over again the boat on the other side, he met up against um, a synagogue official named was John Darius. And a woman, obviously, you've heard this story before, who was, uh, had an issue of blood and hemorrhage that would continue the flow. So I wish you guys, let me know, you guys there, say amen. Hey, amen. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I know we have a drama that testifies and speaks and has a ministry of its own, but I definitely want you guys to get this. So Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And it says here, when Jesus had crossed over again to the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, so he stayed by the seashore. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up on seeing him, fell at his feet, implored him earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she will get well and live. And he went off with him and a large crowd following him and pressing in on him. Verse 25, a woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all but rather had grown worse. 
after hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak, for she thought, if I just touch the garment, I will get well. Immediately the flow of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had healed from her affliction. Immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garment? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, who touched me? And he looks around to see the woman who had done this, Verse 33, but the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. I, I, I love verse 33 because ultimately, being in the presence of holiness will make you fear and tremble. Oh, yeah. And what happened to her was a, a miracle. Here's a woman who spent her finances and, and for over a decade was, was, was afflicted by, by, by a physical situation that caused her social problems because of the, 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 the type of problem she had. It was an issue of blood that would have made her unclean in the Jewish uh, community. Not only that, it, it's psychological too because now she has to tell a, tell a partial, partial truth in order to be around people. It says here that she told Jesus the whole truth. Finally, she was able to reveal to him, this is what I've been hiding from others. This problem that I have, I will tell you because of what you've done to me. So I know that when someone, when in the, listen to this, in, in the presence of Jesus, and we, we fall before him in, in his holiness, there is a fill, fear and trembling that happens to us because of we know that we're in the presence of a holy God. When we worship God, this, the, the tonight as we worship, we worship with an expectation of a holy God. If we, don't, we don't always have that experience where, you know, in the Bible we see that experience where we have this physical uh, reaction to, to holiness. As we saw here, this was like a physical reaction, fear and trembling because of what had happened to her. We worship God with, with, a, with a knowledge of God, with an expectation of good things to come. But see, she came to Jesus because she knew she had a problem. Jairus came to Christ because he knew he had a problem. The problem was his child. Both had social issues. Both had psychological issues. Sometimes it's the one problem in our lives that causes a series of issues. Amen? How many of you guys have ever had an issue, a problem with drinking or a drug use? Raise your hand. And you know that one problem caused a, a series of other problems, right? But it was just the one problem. But you take away the one problem, guess what? The social problem clears up. The psychological problem clears up. Your finances get better because of the one problem. See, she, it said that she had a series of problems because of the one issue. But she knew where her help came from. Jesus. Amen. So I will charge you tonight that you need to know, first of all, what your problem is. When you come to discipleship, when you come to church on the street, you recognize that there's a problem in my life, there's something that I need to bring to Christ. It's not that you get busy, you get quick in doing things, and you forget the purpose and the reason of why you come to Christ. You have to recognize whatever it is that brought you to Jesus, whatever it is that brought you to church, man of the mission, whatever it is that's bringing you to a safe place where you need to find God's voice in your life, you need to bring that problem to Him. You need to identify the issue and bring it to Jesus. Father, I'm an addict. Jesus, I'm an alcoholic. Father, I'm an adulterer. I have problems with pornography. Lord, this is what's bothering me. I, I, I don't know how to live my life, and I'm bringing it to you now. You can't cover it up with a bunch of work. You can't cover it up with a bunch of busyness. Busyness in of itself is not a good thing if you haven't brought the problem to Christ. I'm telling you. Because I've seen it time and time again. You get involved in the activities. We, yes, this is an out, outreach, soul winning uh, ministry. Yes, and God will have his way in us. But, Father, but I, I'm telling you, God wants you to bring that problem to him. God wants you to resolve the reason of why you're here. Jesus said in Mark 5, he said, Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see you. See, Jesus asked you, what is it you want me to do for you? Have you ever figured that out, what it is that you need to bring to the Lord? See, a hemorrhage problem, something that happened to her for over 10 years, that's, that's a pretty serious issue. And I know that some of us have had issues in our lives that we've been dealing with for over 10, maybe 20 years. Some of you have problems of forgetful, forgiving, giving, letting things go, having closure. You've been holding on to this resentment, and that's the hemorrhage in your life. 
That's the thing that's been causing you a series of other problems. And if you just bring it to God, and you lay it at Christ's feet, and ask Him to but just let it release, just give it to the Lord, yeah. and be free of that. Amen. Can I get a good amen? Amen! Hey. Hey. And I'm telling you, amen. And in today's modern church, many suffering, afflicted, desperate people, souls, attend church with the same expectations of Jared's, and the same expectations of a woman. Having heard of Jesus Christ through friends and family, they have a great hope they will find answers and healing in the house of the Lord. So where is Christ today? The scripture says that we are the body of Christ and we're made up of many parts. Are you playing your part? If we are the body of Christ, listen to the, to the Christian. This is to the Christian, to the believer, those who are called the way. I'm talking to you. If we are the body of Christ, are you playing your role? See, a lot of times what happens in the body of Christ is that it becomes uh, unbalanced. It, it, one side does more because it compensates for what the other side is not doing. There are those here in the church who are not walking in the gifts that God gave you. And what happens is that the other parts of the body need to compensate for what you're not doing. And so these newcomers come, these sinners come to our sanctuary. They're looking for hope, they're looking for Christ, they're looking for love, and we're too busy being about ourselves to put out a hand and engage. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to engage with the sinners in this place. We're not supposed to come to church, read the word, and leave. We're supposed to come to church and engage. We bring the fish here, right? Amen. There you go. Just go ahead and engage, right? There you go. There you go. Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians 4, 4 says, there is one body and one spirit. That means that we actually are united in the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ. We are united by one body, one spirit, with the one purpose of the ministry of reconciliation. See, everything in of itself, it's all a good thing. All, all the outreaches, all that we do are great things. But if we're, not, if we're not doing the ministry of reconciliation and bringing people to Jesus and letting them know the good news, then we're doing those things in vain. But we do those things. We tell you about the Lord. But I am encouraging this body of believers tonight to engage with the sinner. If I, because I remember me, I used to come to church, and man, I had a problem. I sat in the back, and I was just waiting for somebody to come up to me. I was waiting for the body to appear. I heard about Jesus. I knew in Scripture that he was good. I saw his love in Scripture. I saw it on the TV screen. But when I sat in church, no one came to me. I'm like, okay, well, how does this work? How, oh, how does it work? Well, it's the body of Christ, right? We begin, we get up. We engage, we begin to love on people. The, I'll show you the most excellent way, and that is love. Paul says that because what love does is it tells you that it's not about you, and you, you're, you're willing to inconvenience yourself for others. Christ was way inconvenienced for others. The ultimate display of love. Amen. So church, I'm asking you, are you loving on the people who come here? Are we engaging with the sinners who who need to be saved? Are we engaging with the sinners here in this place? We're all sinners saved by grace. I'm talking about members who come to church with a hope. Those who had a hemorrhage in their life, uh, metaphorically speaking. Those who are dealing with addictions, afflictions, and all types of pain and emotional strains. Are we engaging with these people? Are we being the body of Christ? Are we being the hands and feet? The body says that we are to do these things. And Christ, the, uh, the Bible says that we are supposed to engage with these people. So my, my, my charge for you tonight is this. It's just like Jairus and, him, who, and, and, and the woman who had the hemorrhage. They knew where the help came from. And as the body of Christ, we begin to rise up and take our role as Christians. Then they know where their help is coming from. We can point them to Jesus and they can find their Savior there. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give them praise. Amen. Amen.
right, it looks great. You're never going to be anything more, more, more than a waitress if you're lucky. You'll probably be nothing but a game banger like your brother. No way. No, I got it. I got you're just going to work on a corner somewhere. somewhere. You little brat, brat. Wait till I get a pull. I get a pull. I'm going to smack you. Sense, 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 sense. Hey, don't take hey, your don't problems, take problems out with me. Out with me. <laughs> My boys look out for each other. Each other. We make sure that no one gets no hurt. Just because, because you let everybody, everybody push you around, around doesn't mean I will. I will. I will. You don't. I don't need I don't you need any you more than I need him. him. I've got a place to go, and I'll never, never come back. back. Never you're gonna be stuck with him all by yourself. You know what? You're gonna have to learn how to grow up. I'll see you around. you to a party of having that having, having tonight at the house. We're gonna have a couple of kids and my friend's band's gonna be there. Everyone who's anyone will be there. Well don't miss out. It's gonna be the party of the year. You don't wanna miss out on it like those Christian stores do you? Have a shot, shot. Loosen up a little bit. Have some fun. Oh, come on. Just have this one, one little drink. You'll feel a lot better afterwards. Here, why don't you take a couple of these too? They'll really make you feel good. good. Thank <laughs> you. 